but they have minds of their own. Meet NASA's new and improved Martian rovers. In terms of being able to go up to rock targets and get a measurement, this is actually 10 times better than what we have already on Mars. Then it's a robot saving lives in the operating room. I think this is another evidence where, as we like to say, surgery is moving from blood and guts to bits and bites. Plus, a lesson in robotics from a San Francisco professor who is inspiring the minds of the future. I get to play with robots all day. It's a great job. And the largest robotics event in the Western Hemisphere takes place right here in San Jose. I see this as probably one of the greatest opportunities for converging technologies. It's a look into the future through the eyes of a robot. Coming up now on Eye on the Bay. Welcome back to Eye on the Bay. I'm Brian Hackney. Someday, they'll do it all for us. But between now and someday, there has to be a new generation of electrical and mechanical engineers inspired to make robots their future. And in the Bay Area, there is a college professor doing just that in his robotics class. Never let your students play with your toys. They always break them. All right, let's see if I can get this guy to stand up. He'll probably tip over just to spite me. Case in point. David Cocken started building robots at a very young age. Way back when I was a kid, I guess seventh or eighth grade, um, I got a robot arm that you could hook up to old Apple IIs. And so basically, just using serial commands and all really simple, basic programming language, you can make the arm, you know, move, er, pick something up, drop it, move around. David is much more than just a lover of robots. What else am I? Um, I'm president of the Robotics Society of America, uh, founder of Combots, which is the largest combat robot company still in existence, um, co-chairman of RoboNexus Consumer Expo, president-elect of the Robot Fighting League. He's also passing on his interest in robots to the younger generation as a professor and computer engineering director at San Francisco State University. As all, always, for those who have not been in my class, feel free to interrupt me at any given moment, ask questions, yell at me, tell me I don't know what I'm doing. We teach students very hands-on kits and things like that to get them actually building robots. I'd like to get you guys actually moving the robots today with whiskers. Um, basically, just walk up into my leg and let's make them turn around. San Francisco State offered me a part-time position two years ago to just start getting some of the students involved in robotics, and I did that for a year. And then last semester, they wanted me to come in and, and teach full time, and so now I'm doing stuff with seniors, their senior projects, which are not structured classes. It's just the opposite. It's okay, you're a senior now. You've you've had all these these classes and all this, this structure. So what do you want to do? Build a you know, come up with something, think of something, and we'll build it together. The robots are done. All we have to do is work on the software and some of the hardware. We have to improve it. David Cockins hopes that one day his students will be at the forefront of robotic technology. It's right where the internet was 10 years ago or PCs were 20 years ago. So the big question is, is how much is robotics going to affect us? And we're training these engineers to basically have the tool set so they can go out and whether they want to build vacuum cleaning robots or they want to build walking robots that uh, translate 10 million languages, whether they want to build soccer playing robots, you know, whatever. We're trying to give them the tools to do that.